today let us learn something very interesting first read this sentence carefully an adverb is to a verb as an adjective is to a noun now let us take this up part by part first let us consider this part an adverb is to a verb now what is the relationship between an adverb and a verb an adverb helps us to modify a verb or qualify a verb so in other words a verb is described by adverb now look at this part an adjective is to a noun now what is the work of an adjective to describe or modify a noun so from these two sets of words what do we understand just like an adverb describes a verb similarly an adjective describes a noun so the relationship between an adverb and a verb is the same as the relation between an adjective and a noun so we can say that these two pairs of words are showing a similar kind of a relationship so that has a special name what is it called it is called analogy so this pair of words is analogical to this pair of words so what is the meaning of analogy drawing an analogy means to draw a relationship of similarity between two pairs of words so let us take up more such pairs of words and see how we can show a relationship of similarity between them noise is to peace as happiness is to dash what are the options sorrow sad joy now what is the relationship between noise and peace they are opposite in nature also note that noise and peace are of the same parts of speech what are they both of them are nouns so now we need to find out a word which will show a relationship of opposite with that of happiness basically we need to find out the opposite of happiness now if i say sad definitely sad has a kind of a meaning opposite to happiness but sad is an adjective but happiness is a noun so this cannot be our answer again if you look at the word joy of course joy is a noun but it is similar in meaning to happiness so both these are synonyms not antonyms so joy is also not the correct answer so what are we left with sorrow now sorrow is also a noun and it has a meaning opposite to that of happiness so what are we going to write we are going to write noise is to peace as happiness is to sorrow so this relationship is showing a perfect analogy hope is to despair as dash is to hatred now at times instead of writing in words we can use symbols to denote the same thing so this colon sign means hope is to despair and this sign is the sign of equivalence and then again we have the colon to show a relationship of similarity so this is is to so first let us understand what is the relationship between hope and despair now again we see that hope and despair are opposite in meaning and both these cases show that the parts of speech are nouns now we have hatred given and we have to fill up this part now hatred is also a noun so the word in the blank has to be a noun and it has to be an opposite word of hatred 
Now, this gust is not showing the opposite of hatred. So, this cannot be the answer. If you look at the word help, help is also not the opposite of hatred. So, our answer would be love. So, we will write love. So, hope is to despair as love is to hatred. So, now we have a complete analogical relationship. A poet is to dash as a playwright is to play. Now, what is the relationship between a playwright and a play? The person who writes a play is called a playwright. Similarly, we have to find out a word which shows a similar relationship with that of poet. So, what does a poet write? He does not write a book. He does not write a pen. What does he write? He writes poetry. So, the correct answer would be a poet is to poetry as a playwright is to play. Cleanliness is to clean as dash is to beautiful. Now, look at the words cleanliness and clean. Now, if clean is the adjective, then cleanliness is the noun. Similarly, here beautiful is an adjective. So, we need the noun form of beautiful. And what is that? It is beauty. So, cleanliness is to clean as beauty is to beautiful. A herd is to cows as a swarm is to dash. The options are chickens, fish and bees. Now, let us first understand the relationship between herd and cows. Herd is a collective noun and cows refers to a noun. So, basically herd is the collective noun used for cows. Similarly, swarm is a collective noun. Now, with which of these options given, we use the collective noun swarm. Do we use it with chickens? No. Do we use it with fish? No. Then what do we use it with? With bees. So, we have heard a swarm of bees. So, a herd is to cows as a swarm is to bees. Monument is to Agra Fort as dash is to Europe. Now, the options are country, city, continent. First, let us understand the relationship between these two. Now, Agra Fort is the name of a monument. So, if monument is a common noun, Agra Fort is a proper noun. Similarly here, what is Europe? Europe is a name of a continent. So, it is a proper noun. Now, the common noun which goes with Europe is continent. Why? Because Europe is not the name of a country, nor is it the name of a city. It is a name of a continent. So, our relation stands. Monument is to Agra Fort as continent is to Europe. Enemy is to dash as calm is to serene. Now, in this case, the first set of relationship is not given. Then, we have to refer to the second one. Now, what is the relationship between calm and serene? They are similar in meaning or they are synonyms. Similarly, here we have enemy. So, in the blank, we need to put a word which is similar in meaning to that of enemy. And what are the options given to us? Foe, friend, battle. Now, we can see from here that enemy has no relation to battle. As in, they are not synonyms. Then, friend. Friend is just the opposite of enemy. So, even this is not correct. Foe has the same meaning as enemy. Both of them are synonyms to each other. So, our correct answer would be enemy is to foe as calm is to serene. 
Now look at this example. Tash is to fox as tigress is to tiger. Now here too the first relationship is not given. The second relationship is given to us. Tigress and tiger. So basically it is the relationship of gender. Tigress is the feminine gender and tiger is the masculine gender. Similarly, we need to have the feminine gender of fox in the blank. And what is the feminine gender of fox? It is vixen. So, vixen is to fox as tigress is to tiger. So, you see on the left hand side we have the feminine genders and on the right hand side we have the masculine gender. So, in all cases you will note that the relationship on one side of this equivalence should match with the relationship on the other side of the equivalence. Coward is to cowardice as the right side is completely blank. So what we have to do here is we have some sets of relationship given as options. Poor is to poverty, poverty is to poor, rich is to poor. Now, the given set of relationship is cowardice to cowardice. So, one side is given. Now, based on their relationship, we have to choose which of the following would be the correct relationship to be placed on the right side of the equivalence. So, first, let us understand the relationship between these two words. Now, cowardice... An adjective and cowardice is a noun. So, one is showing a noun, the other is showing the adjective. So, basically, it is the noun and the adjective of the same word. Now, we also know that the adjective comes first followed by the noun. Now, let us look at the options. First, if you look at rich and poor, you see that these two are showing opposite relationship. So, this cannot be our answer. Next, let us look at poverty and poor. Now, poverty is noun and poor is adjective. Now, in the given relationship, adjective comes first. So, the order is not matching. Hence, this is also not the correct answer. Next, we are left with poor and poverty. So, here poor is the adjective and poverty is the noun. So, this relationship matches with the given one. We have the adjective first followed by the noun. So, our correct answer would be Poor is to poverty. So, coward is to cowardice is the same as poor is to poverty. Now that we have done different kinds of analogical relationships, let us try to solve this exercise. Fill in the blank to form a correct analogy. Now here, a kitten is to a cat as a dash is to a deer. So, what is our first part? A kitten is to a cat. Now the younger one of the cat is called a kitten. So in the second part, a dash is to a deer. What do we need to fill it up with? We have to fill it up with the younger one of a deer. What is it called? Now in the given option, we have calf, fawn and lamb. Now we know that calf is not the younger one of a deer. So this is not the answer. Lamb is also not the name of the younger one of a deer. So even this is not our answer. Well, the correct answer would be fawn. So a fawn is the name given to the young one of a deer. So the relationship stands, a kitten is to a cat as a fawn is to a deer. So what did we learn today? We learned how to draw an analogy between two pairs of words and how do we do that? 
For doing so, we need to find out a relationship of similarity between the two sets of words and match them properly. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across Maths, Science, English and Social Science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback. Personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.